Hi and welcome back to the course. In this video we're going to look at a better workflow for working with Heroku and automated deployments. Imagine that you wanted your app to always have automated deployments just so you could make sure that it's always working when you make a deploy or when you make a commit. Well, we could activate automated deployments by going over to our dashboard, going over to deploy and then selecting Enable Automatic Deploys from GitHub. So you have to select the branch that you want to deploy from. In this case, we've only got a master branch, but this is a good branch to, to set automatic deploys from. And then Enable Automatic Deploys. Whenever a commit arrives at master, it's going to deploy to GitHub. Now, what that means is that while you're working on some new code, you don't want to work on the master branch. Let's go over to the terminal. And I'm going to clear it. And now, if we do git status, we are on branch master. For example, say we want to add some new code, a new, a new thing we're working on, such as a new resource or something like that. We don't want to work on the master branch because while we're adding the resource, our code might break. So what we want to do is we want to do git branch and create a new branch. For example, feature slash um, item categories. This creates a new branch and then we have to tell git to use that branch. So we do git checkout feature slash item categories. Okay, and now if we do git status, we can see we are on the branch feature slash item categories. Okay. Then we would go over to Atom and we would add our new code. Um, in this case, for example, I'm just going to add a readme file, which is not a feature evidently, but uh, and this wouldn't break your code. But nevertheless, I'm going to add this here so I can show you what the process would be like. Um, and this is built with Flask, Flask, RESTful, Flask, JWT, and Flask Evil Alchemy. Okay, so a simple README app. It's not very useful. You may want to put some more details in it. But nevertheless, it's the README file there. Now, when we go back to our terminal, and we do get status, we see that that file is new there, we can add it, and then we can commit it, add it, readme file. And then as always, we can do git push, notice that this fails. So we have to do git push set upstream, blah, blah, blah. So we can copy that, and put it in there. And that is going to send our branch feature slash item categories, which is now a really bad name, since it's only a readme into the origin remote repository, and it's going to create that branch there as well. So now both the local and the remote repositories have this new branch. Okay, and then what you would do is you would run your app locally, you would test it to make sure everything works. And then once you're confident that your new thing works, you would merge it. So you would do git checkout master, you would go back to the master branch, and then you do git merge feature slash item categories. Okay, and then of course, once you've merged it, you have to push it over. So what's happened there is we've created a new branch, and then we've added our changes there, then you would test your API carefully. And finally, at the end, you would go back to the master branch and bring in all the changes from the other branch into master. And once this happens, the automatic deploy is triggered. And so this is probably in the activity section here, deploying right now. And as you can see, it is deploying. But it's deploying now and not when we committed originally to the feature branch. Okay. Now, once you're done with the feature, you can do git branch slash D feature slash item categories. And that deletes the branch just to make sure that you don't go back to it. Once you've merged it with the master branch, you want to stop committing to that branch and you want to create another one. So if you want to keep working on the feature branch, 
don't merge it until the code is finished. And if you do merge it and then you want to add more, then create a new branch for that. And this way, you can always keep the master branch clean. And that's what it's called, keeping it clean. So the master branch is always deployed and is always working. You never merge anything into master that isn't wor apologies, isn't working. And that way, your application is always working. Your users, if you have any users, can always access it and so on and so forth. So generally a good thing to activate automatic deploys, but you have to be careful that you're not working on untested code on the master branch. Just make sure that you work on separate branches. Similarly, you could create another branch, which is often done, a branch called production, git branch production. And you can enable automatic deploys on that branch instead of on master, if you prefer that. Okay, so that's everything for this video. I just wanted to show you quickly a sort of workflow that you can follow to develop the final project for this course when we deploy it on Heroku. We will be following this, this sort of method. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy that final project. And in the next section, we're going to be looking at the um, developing, you know, deploying to your own server, which is also going to be very interesting. So without further ado, I'll see you on the next video.